bunch of different lives this morning and I had an inclination to go ahead and just do a pop-up garden to table with Heather Lynn. Hello, Heather Lynn. How are you? Um, and I, I have to make soap today. I've got business stuff to do. I've got a ton of stuff going on. So I've got to make soap. So I figured I would do a live while I was making it. Um, anybody who does want my personal soap recipe, I'll be more than happy to email it to you. Um, but it's a very simple recipe, but it, uh, what are you doing? Oh my goodness. There's a kitten under here. Um, it's a very, very simple recipe. It's five ingredients plus your fragrance. So, hey, there's Skinner Farms, Boots and Bounty Homestead, Annette. Hi, you guys. So the gist of my goat milk soap recipe is literally milk and lye, which makes your bubbles after the reaction. And then I use olive, coconut, and castor oils. Uh, this is the same recipe I've been using for 12 years. I have a huge clientele following. I'm doing orders both online and in person here. Um, so we make a lot of soap. So we'll start out some of the main items that you do need. Um, you need a stick blender. This thing works wonders. Um, I use this size soap racks. Um, this makes 10 bars plus two ends. My kids get the ends. The 10 bars go for sale. Um, and I pick these up on Amazon. And after this live, I will put every link to everything that I'm using um, in the description. I'll, I'll do that. Now I also use some different coloring. So we do use mica powder. I pick it up by, in cases. Um, these are bottles of mica powder um, just to tint the soap at the end, um, as well as soap scents. Now you can use either essential oils or use um, candle fragrances. Those work too, because those are so human worthy. Um, so I'm actually going to be using some of my fragrances that I have today instead of essential oils. I tend to only do the essential oil soap when I have orders for them because it's a lot more expensive to make. So my margin profit is almost nothing once you add that in. So I'm going to be doing a couple different scents today. I've got white peach and hibiscus. I've got one called whiskey barrel, which is my um, most sold men's scent that I've got. And then my daughter had called me and said she was out of hers and she uses dragon's blood for her and her husband. Um, and then I've also got a lavender that is a scent, um, but I'll probably make an essential oil one of those as well. Now, other equipment that you do need to do soap, you need a scale, um, a kitchen scale, because everything is in weight, not in measurement. You need a bucket. This is just an old bucket that was in my garage that I use and it's full of ice because I'm going to keep my, my soap cool. You need a scraper. Um, I picked up an old Pyrex that I use um, that's only for soap. And then, oh, Grayson disappeared with my pot. I have an old metal pot as well. Hey, Gracie, bring me the pot, please. I think she was rinsing it out. Um, so tool wise, that's all you're really going to need. Uh, at the end, you do need a soap cutter of some sort, but you can use a regular knife if you want to. Thanks sister. This is the metal pot that I use. Now what I'm going to do is this pot is going into my ice. It's just going to sit down in here and I'm going to get it all around. Have you started reading the book yet? Casey, what book are you guys reading? I got to I got to hear this. <laughs> um, so the oils that, like I said, I use and I do, I have a big five gallon chub of coconut oil. I'm using this for, because I'm in the video and I'm not going to be leaning down and, and grabbing it out of a big five gallon bucket. Um, but just organic coconut oil. This is just a, a olive oil that I use. I order my castor oil online. Okay. My goat milk, um, I actually have 18 gallons to get through today, whether it's um, soap or lotion or freezer. Well, this is recycled in an old water jug. Now you can see, I don't know if you guys can see it, but there is a cream line right there. So this is how much cream the Nubians give us per gallon. Um, and I'm actually gonna shake this 
and get this um, so it's all stirred up. But we use recycled water um, gallon buckets and half gallon jars, depending on how much milk I get. So I think it's all mixed. I don't want all the cream at the top. I want it mixed throughout the milk because I don't want, um, I want that the mixture in the soap so that I don't have one set of soap come out today that's creamier um, than the others that has less milk in it. And look, the cat's coming up here. He's like, hey. Now, lye is, lye is a super duper easy thing to find. Everybody freaks out about lye. Lye is actually drain cleaner. Um, I buy this by the case. This is household 100% lye drain opener. I get this at Ace Hardware. They order by the case for me. I get 12 bottles at a time. They run, oh, I want to say four, four or $5 a piece. I don't know what the price is right now because I bought four cases right before all the shortages started. I think I got them for $3.50 a piece. Um, don't freak out about this. A lot of people freak out. They're like, that's drain cleaner. Yeah, it's lye. It's, it's the same thing as what you can order. Um, and it's actually less expensive to get it through your hardware store than it is to get it online for soap making. And it's exactly the same thing because you just need to make sure it says that hundred percent, hundred percent lie. Now lie is caustic. So when I do measure that out on pour, I do wear goggles. Um, I don't wear gloves anymore. I probably should. I'm pretty naughty when it comes to that. So I'm going to go through the chat really quick. Who do we have in here? We've got Boots and Bounty. We've got 12 Stones. Hey, 12 Stones. Skinner Farms, Josh. It's good to see you. Cody at Hog Deer. Danny Days. Danny, how are you, my friend? Um, let's see here. And that's Casey because it's not Mr. It's just Boots and Bounty. So it's Casey. Um, Annette. Annette, my friend, it is so late where you are at. Um, of course, we've got Glenn and Jessica, I don't know, did Jessica make it back yet? I've got Chuck in here. So you guys, as I'm doing this, let me know if you have questions, but anybody who does want my recipe, I've got it written out. Um, I can email it to you. you. Just shoot me an email at chris at chrisandlarry.com and I will send you out my recipe. This is the one that we've been using for years and years. Um, it's actually, it's, it's kind of interesting because you see a lot of recipes out there that are have a ton more ingredients in it. And ours is very simple. And ours is one of the blue ribbon at the county fair for like eight years in a row. Um, and this is a, just a fun, simple recipe. But I've got the entire directions written out. So you're going to start out, you've got your, your pot here is in the ice. Um, and it's, there's a fuzz ball in there. We got to get that out. Oh my. Let me take a paper towel in there. Um, You've got to get this pot as cold as possible. When lye reacts with water or milk or any other liquid, it turns very hot. That's what gets it to clean drains. But once it reacts, it'll actually make suds. Yes, I got it. Okay, so I'm going to put this down in here. I've got water in the bottom of this. Um, and ice going. So we're going to measure out, I'm going to start off by measuring out my milk and I want 12 ounces of milk. Do you see that? I just checked my recipe just in case because I know it by scratch, but I need to make sure when I'm making it for you guys that I'm uh, reading it here. So we're just going to measure out and I'm just taking a, just a bowl and I'm putting it on my scale and I'm tearing my scale. So it's back to zero and that looks good. That milk is fresh, fresh got bubbles in it now but I'm going to measure this out to 12 ounces and we're going to get this in the pot so that it's cooling down again and this milk is really cold I actually dropped it into a freezer earlier um, just to keep it really cold now you can also make ice cubes um, or we bag up a lot of times we'll bag up our milk in 12 ounce buckets or 12 ounce Ziploc bags and throw those in the freezer. So I know exactly how much now, because my milk's not frozen, I have to go really, really slow with the lye. So I'm going to throw that in this pot here. All right. So all it is, is just milk in the bottom of that. And I've got this pot dropped into that bucket with the ice and I've got it at an angle so that it's down as far as it can go. In there and it's going to cool off and we're going to move target off because he wants to help apparently today 
Um, and next I'm going to measure out my line. Now what I do with my lies, I use the Dixie cups. I measure it out. It actually will do about three ounces in one cup. I need 4.3 ounces total. So I'm going to put those on, clear out my thing again. I'm grabbing goggles because I don't want lie to jump up into my eyeballs. I've had that happen before. It burns bad. It can actually hurt you severely if you get enough of it in. So I always wear goggles when I'm working with lye. So I'm going to measure this out. And these are in granules, you guys. This lye is just like, it almost looks like salt. Um, and I'm going to measure out 4.3. So I'm going to put three in the one and Close to three, 2.8. We make soap. There's 4.3 right there. Perfect. We make soap um, at least once a week. We do between 40 and 80 bars um, every week. It takes 28 days to cure the soap. So I have about a thousand bars right now sitting on my rack. Um, I have a, a bread maker's rack, like what you would see at Subway, where they've got all the loaves of bread in with um, trays. And I have those that in the other room in my studio in the corner. Um, and I'm just sprinkling this lye just a little bit at a time because it will heat that milk up really fast. The hotter the milk gets, the darker the soap will be um, before you even put your dyes in. So you need to really get that stirred and kept cool or you're gonna have a dark brown soap. Um, right now, my milk is just a real beautiful light, light cream, which is what it was when it went in. You do, you need one of those racks because you can use that rack, not just for soap, but you can use it for all of your tinctures and everything and just stack them up. Um, and that's, I mean, we use that if I don't have soap going, like say in the winter time, um, January, I tend to not make soap. December, I tend to not make any soap. My goats are most likely out of milk at that point because we've dried them off. Um, I try to give my girls some breaks while they're pregnant. So we, we milk and freeze. So um, to keep our goats so that they're healthy. I want to keep their weight up, especially because we don't have grazing in this area. So they don't get to eat constantly. Can we still subscribe? Amber, yes. Um, I will shoot you through Facebook a link when I'm done here. I do have a monthly ordering that's either a bar of soap, two bars of soap, or two bars of soap and a matching lotion. Um, and I've, I have that and on auto delivery and we send them out on the 15th of the month. And Amber, since you're local, um, we will talk about what we need to do so that I can either mail it to you or we can do a pickup and you can save, save a dime. Um, thank you guys for dropping those links in there. Make sure you put a thumbs up because the uh, YouTube loves seeing people in chats, people in thumbs up and views. We are approaching our 10,000 subscribers. You guys, I am so thrilled. We just got our t-shirt line set up. Um, as soon as we hit 10,000, we'll be able to have our, um, our t-shirt line on our YouTube page, which I'm so excited about, or it has it a, um, a merch rack on the bottom. Um, but like I said, we make a lot of soap. It, it's just kind of part of many days, the racks that I have, and I have eight of these is what I've got. I've actually got four of them filled that I have to cut still today. Um, eight of those will be 80 bars plus the ends that my kids swipe. Um, and we do that at least once a week. All right. So I've got the first half of the lie in. I'm going to show you guys what this milk looks like now so you can get a feel for it. it's gotten real gold and I don't want to dump it out. But see how it's a yellow gold color. So I want to keep this as cool as possible. And I'm actually going to grab there's a, a little cup of water here to put in this ice to get it uh, broken up a little bit more. 
All right. So what I'm doing is I'm just adding some water into the bottom of this ice bucket. This ice froze itself back. There we go. Get that in a little bit deeper. So I'm going to go ahead and keep putting this lye in. And I'm just putting a little bit at a time. And as this lye is doing, and you're going to constantly stir. Each set of soap, um, I stir all the time. I mean, this is just kind of part of it. You just constantly. So today we'll be, like I said, making 40 bars at least. Um, and so I'll be standing here stirring for the next four hours. <laughs> um, but that's okay. You know, I mean, it's 40 bars. It's what we do. We sell our soap for $6 a bar. Um, or two for 10 is what we do at our shows. And then online, we have it a little bit higher because of the shipping rates. Because we don't charge for shipping. We just charge for the... There was still a... Must have been on my spatula, a little fluffy. Where is that a fuzzball? Oh, and one thing I always do is I always have a pile. It's, I don't know, it's too deep. Paper towels just sitting in front of me. Um, just in case I get anything on me, because I don't wear gloves. I don't like the feel of gloves. They make my arms itch. I have really bad um, hand and foot eczema that I've had since a child that the goat milk soap and lotion actually helps with unless they get really stressed out. Um, and then I, I break out. So I tend to not put the rubber gloves on because it makes my skin really annoyed and then I suffer the next day. So I would just assume wash and get myself cleaned up if I get any lye on me. So now, while this is sitting, I still have about half of one of these Dixie cups to go um, of lye. And I'm going to let this sit and cool down a little bit more because it's starting to get a little too gold for my, my standards. Um, I'd like to keep it as light as possible because when I put in my uh, mica powder, um, it, if it's darker, the color turns a little bit funny. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and measure out. And I just use an old Pyrex. This is one I picked up at a yard sale. I use this for my soap only, just in case. So I'm going to put that on my scale as well. And like I said, if anybody does want this recipe, shoot me an email. Um, and I'll send it over to you. Like I said, I, I, we love making goat milk soap. And we love sharing this with people. Because it's just one of those lost arts, you guys. And I've been doing this for a long time and I love it. I, I just absolutely love it. So it calls for 22 ounces of olive oil. So I actually need 1.6 pounds because the way my scale reads. And this is just a regular olive oil here. You can get this online. You can get this at Costco in bulk. Now it is quite a bit and I will show you how much this is once I measure it out and I stay very exact if I can. And the reason I do is because I don't want to have to adjust the amount of lye that I put in because I've added too much of something else. All right. So there is 1.6 ounces. So what's it come out to just about what three and just over three cups, it looks like, is what it measures out to. All right, let's keep stirring here. Make sure that's nice and stirred. And like I said, this is an all-day project when, we, when we're making soap for our customers. Um, many days we'll just one scent and do all eight of them in one scent, especially like lavender or one of our, our bigger sellers, um, or if it's our monthly soap that we do. Um, we choose a new scent every month for our, um, for our soap business. So we choose a new scent that goes into our auto delivery. Okay. Now this is just plain coconut oil. Like I said, I have a five gallon bucket I'm using. This is organic virgin from Costco. You can use that as well. Um, because of the amount of soap that we do, I buy it by the five gallon buckets and have it shipped in. Um, just a big spoon. That's all I was grabbing. I'm going to reset my scale and I need eight ounces of coconut oil. Now in the summertime when I'm making this, my coconut oil is liquid. Right now it's soft, but it's not liquidy yet. So I'm just going to scoop this in. 
And I know about how much it's going to be because I've been doing this for so long. But be really careful that you don't go over. With coconut oil too, you can make that your first thing you put in your paint in your bowl. Let's see if I can get this all in here. It's 7.7. I'm getting close. Come on. And I have a kitten who just does not want to behave today. All right, I'm right at eight there. He wants so bad to be on this counter. I think he smells the goat milk up here. But I don't want him up here because of the lie. So now I'm sitting at, there's my first two oils. And I put castor oil in two. And I only put one little ounce of castor oil. It's just a little itty bitty. So let me add some more lye in here. Like I said, you're doing things constant and um, going back and forth between stuff. You could measure everything out ahead of time if you really wanted. Um, I tend to not because it makes me slow down with adding the lye if I have to measure my oils out. Come on. Knocked over a plant. That's awesome. I'll clean that up in a minute. All right. I'm still going. It's still a really, really beautiful yellow color. And let me show you guys. I'm going to get back in the ice. So it's, it's the color's not bad. It's really warm, though, down in here. So I need to make sure that that stays in that cool. Now I'm going to add one more ounce of oil into this oil. And this is a brand new one. So let me see. Yep. Pop it with a knife here. Okay. So I got castor oil and like I said, castor oil just, it hardens really nicely um, and it helps with moisturizer. That's why we use castor oil. and it's only one little ounce, which is hardly anything when it comes to soap making. So it's a half an ounce. All right, we're sitting at one ounce of that. Now that oil, that's all the oil that we need for this. That's the extent of what we put into our goat milk soap. So we've got our milk and our lye. We've got our three different oils all dumped into there. And let me put this last bit of lye in here and get this stirring. Now, I hand stir the lye in. I always have. Um, it makes the soap, uh, to me, a lot creamier. Um, but once I put my oils in, I'll use a stick blender. What's Casey saying here? So I said, that's what I thought. Base. Okay, basic ingredients, lye. What kind if there's a difference? It just needs to say 100%. Um, and lye is drain cleaner. Um, Chuck, lye is drain cleaner. As long as it says on it, 100% lye, and there's nothing else in here but lye, you can use from the hardware store. Um, because it's exactly the same stuff that you get at the soap companies. We did an experiment on it 10 years ago to make sure. Hello, sweet boy. Come on. Okay. My teenage kitten just wants to be part of the world with us. Awesome. Red Road Homestead, as soon as I get done with this first batch, I will send you over my recipe so you've got it. Oh, yeah, Josh Skinner Farms. Uh, uh, coconut smells awesome. I actually have, I mean, these are all scents that I have, and I have a whole nother drawer full of them. Um, we've been picking these up for years and years. We know which ones sell really well in our area and which ones don't. Um, a coconut, I have one that's, it reminds me of the Tropicana um, sunscreen, sun lotion. Um, and I've got one of those in there. And that's actually a really big seller. I think I might even be out of that one. I have a list in the other room. I keep track of every bar of soap that comes out um, via mail and the location. So I kind of have an idea of what people look for. And then I have a list of every soap that is sold local and who orders and reorders and what their scents are. Um, I have an Excel sheet for all of my customers because I want to make sure that I'm getting them exactly what they're looking for. But that coconut is an awesome scent, the Tropicana, um, that one. But today I'm actually going to make first, I'm going to do what's called whiskey barrel. 
Um, and I have a couple customers that bought the last bars at my last show. And Whiskey Barrel is my biggest men's seller. Um, I actually tint this one um, like a dark green kind of brownish color um, is what we tint our soap on this one. Now you're gonna stir this lye until there's no granules left. And sometimes it takes longer than others, especially if you're using frozen goat milk soap. Um, it'll go a little faster um, if you're not, because you have to melt that soap down too. But everything is real smooth in here right now. All right, so the color is a real pretty golden color. Um, it's nice and cool still. So the reaction has already started stop to, started to stop, which is great. Now, lye reacts three different times when you're doing this cold press style soap. You can also do a hot press style in a crock pot and cook it up. Um, it can get hot. I have broken crock pots that way. So I'm going to go ahead and dump my oils just right into this bucket. What do I use for tinting? I use a natural mica powder. Um, and you can get all different ones. You can also grind up different um, petals if you wanted to, to do some different, you know, different things. We put a lot of flowers in if it matches. Um, what's this one? Lily flowers. There's lilies. We'll put those on top. Um, but I use mica and you can get them in little bags. You can get them in big containers, or I get this one by Dibble Dabble, and they actually do candle and soap mica, um, and they come in these little, these little containers. So you can see we've used some of that one out of here. There's a gold that we've used. Each of my scents, I actually tint the same color every batch. Um, that's for my own OCD. <laughs> so I can keep track of it, especially when I'm putting it out on a table. I know that all of my whiskey barrel are going to be like an olive green color. I know that all of my pink lemonades are going to be half yellow, half pink. Um, and you can do that. You can, you can add color to partial. Um, what I'll do is get out a bowl and um, pour half of it in and tint one color and then leave the other and then different and blend that all up. So it seems like everything's real cool. My coconut oil is not melting, which is a good sign. That means that this soap is going to stay a real beautiful color before we tint it. It's not going to be hard to tint. So I'm, I'm just going to keep stirring it by hand for now. And then I'm going to get out the stick blender and blend it up. This process takes about 20 minutes um, to get it to the point that it's called tracing. And tracing is where you lift up your spoon after everything's been blended and blended and you can write a line or your name or a heart or whatever you want with the drippings and it stays on top. You can still see the um, shape that you put on there. I tend to always write just a straight line. Now this pot is staying cold enough for the coconut oil is actually cooling up against the side. So I'm going to keep stirring here, uh, make sure everything's incorporated, and then we're going to get the stick blender out. I will put links to everything, you guys, um, in the description of things that we use in this, whether it's the lye or the scent or the different oils. Um, but I'll put that down in the bottom so you can, you can pull those. And you know what? Matt Backlash, it ended up in the back of Larry's Jeep and he missed it. He brought it into me yesterday. So I'm going to rerun a tag on that one um, and get that back in the mail to you. Um, he was trying to be helpful and he wasn't. I love Larry. I remind myself that every day when things like that happen. Um, so no, it's sitting, it's actually sitting back in my studio right now. Um, he brought it in from the car last night and said, I forgot to mail this off. Um, so I do have that gift for Panda still. It is, but it's here and it'll be there shortly. So you guys make sure you do a thumbs up down below. Um, all right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mute my mic for a second when I start blending this. So you guys don't have to listen to this stick blender. This is just a $20 stick blender from Walmart. I only use it for soap and lotion. So you have to watch because soap and lotion will get on the end of it. If you're not careful, 
And that's actually got remnants on it. So I want to wipe that all down. You need to make sure everything is wiped down before you get started too. Just looks like it had a little spot in there. That's why the paper towels are always sitting in front of me. All right, you guys, if you have any questions so far, just put them in the comments. I'm going to mute this so you guys don't have to listen to that for the next few minutes. But I'll answer any questions when you guys, when I'm done. I'll, I'll unmute every once in a while too so I can talk with you. Now, when I'm blending this, you guys, as you can see, I'm using two hands and I'm, I'm going in big circles. Um, I'm doing that to make sure that all the oils, including the coconut oil, get incorporated. I'm actually going to take off my goggles now because I don't have any more active light up here. And I can read a little bit better. Um, oh, it's not letting you subscribe. Okay, Amber, I'll get with you. I promise I'll get with you. Um, I'll, I'll shoot you a message. There may be a link error in there or something. Um. But yeah, you guys, I, I try and I go in a circle one direction and then I turn around and go in a circle the other direction. And I want to make sure that everything gets incorporated. So as you can see, as we're going, it's starting to get very fluffy in here. This is going to be about, oh, 15 min more minutes of blending though to get it to where I want it. So like I said, if you have any questions, ask away. I'm going to mute so you don't have to listen to it. Annette, as for tips getting your business off the ground, start a website, start right there, work on customers. Um, I use Etsy a lot. I don't know if there's a an Etsy down in Australia for you guys, but put it out there to people. Um, shake hands, make business cards, have everything matching. So the labels on your business cards and the labels on whatever you make need to look the same. So just keep it really professional and get going from there. Um, that's the best thing I can say. I don't know exactly what you make, um, or do. So it's hard to tell you which direction to go, um, for marketing and that you could do Facebook ads. You could do things like that. I don't know what the difference is in Australia though, to the U S so, um, but there's, there's all different things that you can do. Um, but throw it out there to people because people, um, that's how we started. It was just word of mouth. And our business has grown tremendously in the last 12 years. We keep adding every year to our business as well. So it was originally just soap. And then we added lotion and we've got bath bombs and we've got um, room sprays and everything matches. And then we started adding all of our laser art and earrings and jewelry and um, signs and that. And it just has kind of gone crazy from there. All right, you guys, I'm going to mute for another second. Any questions, just post them. All right, you guys, I want you to see how thick it's starting to get. It's almost like a really thin pancake batter right now. So it still has a ways to go, but it's already starting to trace. I kept it real cool 
which is nice. Tracing again is where if I pick up my item and I draw with the drippings, that those drippings will stay on top where I can still read it. It won't like be on top, but it'll still be where you can read it. Um, so I'm gonna blend for a few more minutes here and then we'll add some scent and some um, color, color. Now, like I had said before, you guys, this goes through three different chemical processes. Now, I want to hit my color and my scent before it starts to thin out again. Now, I've traced, which means I can see everything that I'm putting on the top. I can see that um, on my soap. It's actually going really quickly because it's not terribly hot in my house right now. If it was warmer, it'd be a lot harder to do. So let me unplug this. Move things around a little so I don't get soap all over the counter here. Okay, I'm going to show you what this looks like now. So it's a real pretty golden color now. All right. And you guys throw a thumbs up down there for me too. So we can let YouTube know that you're in here. Now, I was looking for the other colors that I use and it must have been in the bags. So what I'm actually going to do, I use like an olive green and I got... So I was digging through while I was stirring. What's the color? Looks like I got two blacks in here. Um, I was looking for an olive green, and it doesn't look like I have one. So we're going to make our own olive green, and we're going to put some black swirls in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my green. You start with your lightest color first that you want. We're going to do the lightest color. We're going to dump most of this into the soap rack. Um, now, this will sit... Um, the soap will be curing in this. I'll put it in here for about 72 hours or until I make soap again, um, which is about 72 hours from today. Um, it's today, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I'll, yeah, I'll be making soap on Sunday afternoon, it looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and put my lightest color in first. We're going to put about three quarters. And I do this by sight, you guys. I don't measure this out. Um. I'll put a little bit in. I just did little dabs. And then I will come back and add more if I need to. So, um, and I'm actually just going to blend this in really fast. All right. Oh, let me mute you so you don't have to listen to All right, with this mica powder, I definitely need a whole lot more than what I put in. Um, this is a newer brand that I've only used a few times, um, which I really do like it. I just, because I like it in the containers. Um, but I want to make sure that this gets into it like a darker green kind of color um, because I'm doing my whiskey barrel and I do a green and black or dark green. And it wants a lot of powder here. Now, you do not have to, to tint your soaps at all. Um, I do only because we've got 40 different scents, and I can keep track of them easier that way. Um, <laughs> Spring Meadow Farm Garden, I will sing for everyone. I know! I should have somebody come up here and sing with me. Um, but let me get this all situated here so you can see. I'll show you. We're about halfway to the color that I want. I'll show you what it's looking like. So you saw how it was golden before. Now we've got a green tint. It's almost like a, a weird cute green, which I don't like yet. I want it more olive. 
So we're going to put a bunch more powder in. So we put about a quarter of that bottle in so far. You can get all sorts of natural dyes too if you want to do it that way. Mica is a natural dye. Um, like I said, we use this a lot. This is more the color that I'm looking for. So give me just a second. All right, so now it's got the green color that I do want. Now, this is not a bread pan I'm putting it in. This is actually a soap loaf. Um, they are a different size than a bread pan. They're long and skinny um, versus a, so a bread pan is short. Um, let me show you the, what the coloring looks like. Because what we're going to do is we're going to put about three quarters of this into this bread pan. Um, and let me just dump it on in. That's all you got to do. And then I'm going to add some dark, some black. into what's left in here and then we're going to mix it all together all right so I, I just left just a little bit there in the bottom put that back in my ice um and then whoo almost wore that soap you guys um i filled it about three quarters of the way of what it is let me grab another scraper here I'm looking for a scraper that I'll never use on food again. Anytime I do my soap stuff, I will never touch the items that I use here into my kitchen again. They will, it'll go right into my soap box. I actually have two soap boxes sitting on the other side of my counter. Um, and the reason I'm, I don't want any contamination, especially using chemicals, um, no matter how much you wash it, you could still have some lye in there. And I don't want anyone in my household to get sick. So I'm, what I'm doing is I'm just scraping down everything. There's a little bit of soap in the bottom of this pan that has gotten so cold it's stuck up against the side. So I wanted to make sure those were all scraped down. Now what I'm going to do now, so I have that green. This stuff is still green. I'm going to go ahead and add in the black mica into here. And it's not a lot. A little bit goes a long way when it comes to the black color. Actually, got some on me. And I'm just going to, I'm going to hand stir this in and I'll, I'll put a little bit more in. It looks like it's going to need a little bit more. And I'm making this almost like a dark gray green color. And this is going to go mixed in with the soap we already have in the rack. Super duper easy, you guys. <laughs> Jen says that she doesn't want to make soap now. She just wants to buy it for me. Jen, this is an all-day event at least twice a week at my house. And we do this. Um, normally, I'd be running a laser machine and jump in between. Um, but the laser is too loud to run a live in in the background. So um, so we're always doing constantly doing other things. Now, this morning when I was on uh, Glenn and Jessica's live watch in theirs, I was actually putting together 300 pairs of earrings. <laughs> That's what I was doing is putting all those fish hooks on earrings. Um, I was multitasking so I could listen to you guys at the same time. So, okay. And now this has gotten to be this dark, almost gray green color that I like for this soap. Now, what I am going to do is because I did not add my scent yet, we're going to go ahead and add a tablespoon of scent in my dish. And you can do that ahead of time. And I probably should have, I wasn't paying attention and it's my own fault. And then I'm going to put a tablespoon of scent in with the stuff we already have. So it's just, this is a metal tablespoon. Um, and I'm using whiskey barrel. That was the scent that I had, was requested of me. I'm going to put that in there. I'm going to put a tablespoon in here as well. And that's all the scent that I'm going to use. Um, and I'm going to mix it by hand. I'm going to start with my pot. And I don't care that there is the darker green in here, we're just going to mix this all in since I didn't do it with the stick blender beforehand. Um, once we get my dark green in here, it's not even going to, to matter. And this will take just a minute. Like I said, I should have put it in before I did the coloring. Yeah, I wasn't paying attention. 
I love the smell. And it does smell like a whiskey barrel. It smells like that wood oak barrel scent with the scent of whiskey into it. It's one of my favorite soap scents for men. Um, now, this thinned out my soap in my dish a little bit, which is okay because, like I said, it goes through three different chemical reactions. It's still tracing. It's just thinner. Um, okay, this is all mixed in. I'm not seeing any remnants of any oil. That's what you need to check for when you're adding fragrances that all the, you don't see any oil bloats. Now, let me go ahead and mix this one in. This one, because it's so cold, is thicker. And like I said, what we're gonna do is just drizzle this darker color over the top of the lighter and it's gonna make a fun kind of pattern in there. Reminds me a lot of using, or of creating icing for decorating cookies without being able to actually lick your spoon. Um, that's the colors that we get out of this. So like I said, I'm gonna show you this. So it's a dark, almost a gray color. And that is, is that a lump? No, it's just cold. Um, making sure that I didn't have a chunk still in there that needed to be, um, needed to be stirred in. And there is some excess color, almost frozen to the bottom here. All right. So what I'm going to do is take this, dump it along the top, and I'll show you when we're done what it looks like. So I'll have two different colored greens here, that lighter kind of mint color green. And then I've got this gray, um, almost olive. It's more of a gray color. I put too, a little too much black in it, but it'll work. Like I said, and I do the coloring so that I can identify um, the soaps when I'm pulling them out of racks and stuff. Okay. And scrape all of this out. Any soap you leave in your in your pan is wasted. Um, so you want to make sure you get everything out of there. And then what happens is, is once this is starting to set up, I start the whole process over, you guys, and go on to my next one. Now we've had this live for forty seven minutes so far. Um, it's about right on track for a set of soap. Now, let me show you before I start doing a little stir here. Let me show you what I've got. You know what? I'm actually going to grab the camera instead because I think that will be easier for you guys to see. So bear with the camera. I hope nobody gets seasick. So what I've got here, I've got the lighter color here. I just dumped the darker color in the center, and you can see that it's already starting to set up. Now, what I do is I go through and I, I bump it. You can take um, your spatula or a fork and you can kind of stir this through if you wanted to, um, just to kind of get some different mixtures. As it's hardening, you can take the back of a spoon and make designs on this. Now this will take a little while to set up. I hope nobody gets seasick, I apologize. So let me just kind of stir this color in. I don't want all of the dark in the center. I want to kind of tie dye it, if you would, around the outside. And this will start to thin out and it'll thicken again. Then it'll thin and it'll thicken up and harden. So that's how soap works. So what I'm going to do now is I will set this stuff aside, you guys, and I will go ahead and... What's it say? Today is brownie baking day for me. I'm telling you, this is a frosting I can't lick. It really annoys me. So, um, and then I'm going to pounce all of the bubbles out because you don't want big bubbles in the middle of your soap. So, I'm going to go ahead and get this. And I can see bubbles coming up. So, you're going to make sure those are all done. And then these will go on a cookie rack. And this cookie rack will go into my big bread rack that I've got. I've got a, a short, uh, a medium size that holds 12, um, 12 cookie sheets. And this will go in there along with a post-it note on the end with the scent. Not that I don't know what the scent is from the color, but we'll go ahead and do that. And this will set for 48 to 72 hours. Then I can pop it out and cut it. Now for cutters, I use a straight blade or I use, actually I use a curvy blade is what I like to do. It's a ripple 
I don't even have it in here. I'll have to go dig it out of the boxes. Um, and I pop, that's why I like these racks too, you guys, because once the soap is hard, you just peel the, the soap rack right off of it to take the soap out. I measure with an old school ruler. I just measure inch long segments and I start at the very end and do a slither sliver um, and then I measure inch long out and cut it with the wavy and then um, those go back on a rack for 28 days and once that happens they get bagged up and ready to be sold all right you guys oh, it, oh rich cat ranch I love duck eggs they make cakes so much fluffier I will tell you that that's how we use our duck eggs for um Good morning, white shoulders, boar goats. You guys have soap on the way too. You guys have two bars in the mail to you. Um, so yeah. Any other questions, you guys? Like I said, soap making is really super easy. It just is very time consuming. Um, it can get really expensive if you don't already have all the supplies and the scents and the colors. Like I said, I have buckets and buckets of scents um, that we use. Certain ones we'll put dried flowers on, whether it's from our garden or from, we'll purchase dried flowers out. Like here for our rose scent, we always tend to put rose petals into it. Those are some rose buds that we picked up. Um, let me close that door. I've got very loud dogs today. They're barking at air. I have ranch dogs that like to bark at air. Um, my is chicken eggs. If you have chickens, one day, absolutely. Um, and we use chicken eggs a lot, but for baking, duck eggs are far better. I'm so excited that you'll love that soap. I, I, I know you will. No, for this though, you guys, like I said, I you find what works for the customers in your area. I know lavender goes really, really fast. So when we do lavender, we do all eight racks of lavender. We do 80 bars of lavender right off the bat. Um, whiskey barrel, I'll actually do a second whiskey barrel today so that we have 20 bars ready because I sold out at my last show. The other flavors we were doing, white peach hibiscus I sold out of, um, and dragon's blood. I think I've only got like one or two bars left of that one. And that one I do a red and black color because um, I guess that's what color dragon's blood is. <laughs> I don't know. Dragon's blood is actually a Chinese herb, um, and it's both a masculine and feminine smell that my daughter absolutely loves. Her and her husband, that's what they use at their house. But we'll do all sorts of different, but there's, there's lots of different fragrances that you can pick up. I've got candy cane. I've got pumpkin pie spice. And then, like I said, if I get custom orders, which I just did a batch of lavender for a customer, um, we'll use essential oils and flowers um, only for them um, because I do have to charge more per bar because essential oils are more expensive than soap fragrance or candle fragrance. So yeah, anybody have any questions? I said, I just wanted to do this pop-up. I haven't done a pop-up on my goat soap. There's actually a video that I already had on there um, from a couple years ago, but it was a straight video, not a, not a pop-up. Yes, Gail, the candy cane, I do it in a red and, and the cream color, and it smells so good. I also have a gingerbread one. A lot of people liked, I did not care for the eggnog smell one. It was too sweet that I had for Christmas time. We try and choose, we do one scent, new scent every month for our auto delivery. Um, and we buy, oh, how big is this one? I got six of these bottles in the other day of the next one. This is 16 ounces, so a pound. So we bought six pounds of scent and that's how many bars we'll end up making, which is, oh, five or 600 bars by the time everything's set and done with that particular scent every month. Um, and we'll, we get going on that. And then we also do ones with loofah in them. We actually uh, grow and cut our own loofah and drop them into like a cupcake style um, mold. We put the loofah in and then we pour the soap over the top of it and we make it, we have them to match. So you can use the loofah and scrub your elbows and, and that. So we do that. We have vanilla. Yeah, I've got vanilla. I've got a vanilla patchouli. I've got a lavender patchouli. 
What else do I have in here right now? Oh, what are some of the favorites? Spearmint and eucalyptus is a good one. I also have a whole line of men's. Like here's a sweet pipe tobacco. Sweet pipe tobacco is a big seller, especially with my dad's shop. He sells out of those at Christmas time every season. Um, but we've got, we do a lot of this kind of stuff. What is my favorite floral scent? Oh, let me think about this for a second. There are so many. I like honeysuckle myself. Um, that's a really good one. What else do I have in here that's really good for peaches and mint? I know that doesn't sound like a floral, but it is more floral. There's more dragon's blood. I have lots of dragon's blood right now. I just ordered. Um, let's see what else is in here that's my favorite. That's Rugged Man. That's another one of the men's sets. We have to do a whole bunch. Lavender Vanilla. I really like the smell of that one. And I, I use that. I actually make a liquid soap as well. Um, I use that before bed. Um, and I actually have a spray that I spray myself and the bedding and everything to help me sleep better. So I do use that. Um, but I think my favorite, favorite scent is actually that um, mint and peach. Yeah, peaches and mint is my favorite. Um, it's a daytime scent. It's, yeah, it's real, it smells more like peaches than like mint. Um, so it's not really a floral, but it's it's on the, the feminine side, I would say. So now my next part of my process, um, I get to clean everything and I get to start all over again um, with the next batch. Now, if I'm doing the same scent multiple times or multiple racks, um, if, I, if I'm gonna do a second one of, let's say the whiskey barrel, then I don't clean my pot out. We'll just keep using the same coloring and the same um, scent. But if I'm gonna move on to, let's say I wanted to do the white peach and hibiscus next, um, then yeah, I actually clean everything from scratch and start all over again. So right now, dirty wise, I've got a Pyrex. I've got the bowl I measured the milk in. I've got two scrapers, one that I I just did the lie with and I wanted to make sure that there wasn't any granules left, which is why I went on to another scraper. Um, I've got the metal pot. Um, I will not clean the ice out but when I do get ready to dump this, I do dump it on a tree outside um, and make sure that my dogs don't go near it just in case there's any lye in the water. Um, I know it probably wouldn't hurt them with the amount of water we've got in there. And then we have a spoon and my blender. So that's what's dirty sitting here. But what, and then what I do, like I said, a lot of times this, we've got milk right now. Um, I use recycled water jugs. This is a refresh safely water. Um, we use those to fill our milk up. Um, and then we put them in Ziploc bags in the freezer if I have an above and beyond amount. Some afternoons, if I have lots of milk, like right now I've got 18 gallons in the refrigerator. I've got to get through. I was supposed to make cheese over the weekend. I never got to it. But what we'll do is we'll sit here and measure out. Um, let's see if the kids... Oh, they must have walked off of that. I have a little rack that holds my Ziploc bags. I don't see what they did with it. They were using it last night. Um, and I put it on my scale with my bag and I, I uh, zero it out. And then we measure out our 12 ounces of milk into the mini Ziploc bags. Second or third drawer? It's not in the second drawer, silly. See, I do have a helper coming in here. No, it's not in the third drawer either. It may have fallen behind the drawer. It's crazy. So, um, yeah, so we'll measure out milk when we have lots of milk, and then we stack them in the quart size Ziploc bags in the freezer and stack them up. We write goat milk, um, and I'll write on it for soap. If I know that it's for soap, I know it's the exact amount if it's in the small bags, and then that way I can pull out whatever I need. Um, we also freeze dry it and reconstitute it um, in the winter time because I'm not milking my girls in January or December um, in this area. Yes, I'm telling you, Gail, peaches and mint is the way to go for your soap scent. That's my favorite. That's the one I tend to use in my bathroom a lot. Um, 
where do you have anywhere the scent is a little more subtle my mom what does it say my mom is a little sensitive lee hello my friend lee and i went to high school together i love you lee um you know what lee i will shoot you a message because i'll make her an essential oil batch I have a couple people that are looking for lavender right now, and I just made a batch of it and sold out really fast. We'll use essential oils instead of scent, fragrance scent for her so that it's um, not a chemical. Rich Cat Ranch. Honeysuckle is my other favorite. And that one, as subtle as it's supposed to be, it smell, it's so, it's a vivid scent. Now, I get most of my scents. All of these dark bottles that you're seeing over here are all from Virginia Candle Supply. Um, there is, is a, a body safe, a soap safe. So you can use it for candles or for um, for any of the, the soap making or body sprays and that kind of thing. Um, there's other companies out there. I mean, we've got some older ones. This is, what's this one? Wellington Fragrance. That's an old one. That's Blackberry. Um, what's this brand? Oh, Elements, that's another brand out there. Here's Neba. And we get, everybody bottles their stuff a little bit differently. Um, yeah, if Larry knew how much soap scent I'd have, he'd be like, dude, you got a lot. <laughs> um, he's not complaining when, you know, I have orders coming in. But uh, you would buy, okay. See, Jennifer says she would buy essential oil ones too over the fragrance. And I agree. There are sometimes like we'll, we have a citronella scent, but I also buy citronella oil and use that, especially during like mosquito season, because the mosquitoes will stay away from me. Um, I actually make a, an essential oil spray for the kids um, because we do have mosquitoes, even though we don't have a, a lot of uh, moisture here. So yeah. Um, if there is a essential oil scent you're looking for, Jen, shoot me an email um, and we'll get that taken care of. Jasmine and honeysuckle. I have, um, it wasn't a very big seller. For some reason in my area, people don't like jasmine. And I don't know why, because jasmine is beautiful. It's a beautiful scent. So no, I don't have any of that right now. There's probably a scent. I think it's in the cabinet outside. Um, no, the, the one that we sell a lot of is farmhouse. And that's a cinnamon based. We sell it all fall, the whole fall season. Um, I think we did 400 bars of it last season um, where I went through bottle and I had to order more and then order more. And I actually have, I want to say four or five of these in my drawer in the other room of the pound size for next season. Pumpkin spice is obviously a big one. Um, but you guys, like I said, it's if you have goats or if you have cows, because you can do it with cow's milk, you can do it with sheep's milk, you could do it with camel's milk for all I know. Um, you could do that. And the moisturizer that the milk gives the skin is amazing. Um, but you can do any type of milk soap that's with the same recipe. You can do it one to one ratio. There's no change over. Um, but my lie is right on the reason that we let it sit for the 28 days. is So the lie completely uh, goes through its saprophanation process crazy, weird word. Um, but basically that's its chemical process where it heats up and cools down and heats up and cools down. And it will do that several times. Um, and then it has to cure. So you don't burn your skin with the lye. That's the big thing. I always tell people, you know, somebody asked me the other day, well, do you have shampoo bars ready? No, because it's only been two weeks since I made them. So I don't want somebody to burn their scalp with the lye that we've used. So we make sure you guys make sure you put a thumbs up down there. Let's do let's do a soap giveaway. Well, I've got everybody on here. I'll pull two of our winter berry, winter wonder berry, which is like a cranberry fresh. Let me grab a giveaway stream here. See if it wants to be helpful and grab the code for me. There it is. Yay. All right. So let's do a giveaway. We're going to choose today's broadcast right now. And let's do hashtag soap. Um, 
I'll start collecting comments. So put hashtag soap in the the box and we will, I'll give away two bars and send them out today. Oh, let's get this figured out here. Screen layout. Um, share my screen. So hashtag soap and put it in the chat bar. See if I can get it to do. There it is. So is it showing it? It is. Yay. All right. Let me. I have to mess with StreamYard a lot. So hashtag soap, you guys. How many do we have? Six entries. Who else wants soap? Somebody put soap in there. If you put a hashtag soap, you'll get into the entry. Um, and I'll throw two bars of soap into the mail today for you guys. Um, again, thumbs up on this on YouTube. Um, it helps with the the whole YouTube process um, to show them that you're watching our channel. Um, it's kind of a weird how they have to monitor it that way, but that's how they do it. That's what we've learned over the years. Um, we're coming up on our 10,000. You guys, we will have it by the end of summer. We should have our 10,000 subscribers. We will do a huge giveaway. Um, Larry and I were talking about it the other day. Um, really excited that our channel has taken off how it has. Um, you guys, it has been an amazing journey and being able to share with you, with everyone, what we do as a family and, you know, what we do for our business and that has just been phenomenal. All right, you guys, what, I see eight. Can we do 10? Are there 10 people? I've got 13 people watching right now. We have like 25 at one point. I talked too long, I guess. So hashtag soap. And then we'll get a couple more entries in and then I'll hit the, the button. But yeah, no, I'm really, really excited. Amanda, it has been, like I said, an incredible journey um, for our family. So my kids very much look forward to the videos. They're not burnt out, which that was a, a choice that we had to make with this. Um, and they have just done amazing with it. You guys, we got nine, one more, one more do hashtag soap. It'll hit the submit button. I'll hit the draw. That's all I need is one more in here. Well, and Deirdre Eagle, like I said, if, if it comes down to it and people need to know things, I'm glad that I was there for anyone who has enjoyed, you know, or has needed information or, or, or that, um, that's what our goal is for our channel is not just to show our own family stuff, but things that we've done on our homestead or on our business to be able to share with others. And that's, you know, that's awesome. All right. One more hashtag soap, you guys. Is there anybody else out there that wants to? If not, I'll just drop. And then you're a one in nine chance, y'all. There's 10. All right. <laughs> Jessica says if she wins it or is it Glenn? No, it's Jessica. I'm sure it's Jessica. Um, if she wins, I get to send it to someone else. So here we go. See if it wants to do. I guess I have to go on this. Come on, my friends. There it goes. All right. So let's see who wins. Twelve stones. Awesome. Shoot me an email. It's chris at chrisandlarry.com. Shoot me an email with your mailing address, and I will throw two bars of soap in the mail today to you. Um, and like I said, I am going to get back to work now, you guys. I've got at least three more batches to do today. And uh, yeah, if you do want my recipe, you guys, I am more than willing to send my recipe to you. Um, and in a couple weeks, we'll do a live doing our lotion as well. So you can get a feel for what we do that way also. Um, but shoot me an email if you want the soap recipe today, and I will email it out to you. Um, it's a PDF attachment that I created. Um, it'll be attached back to your email. So chris at chrisandlarry.com is my email address. So um, but just put soap recipe. And I will get that in the mail to you. But I am so excited. Thank you so much for being here today. And I will see you guys. We have a video dropping tomorrow. And then we have our live next Monday. I don't even know what I'm going to do yet. Because I was going to do soap. But now I'm here. So we'll figure something out. Maybe we'll just do a chat on Monday, you guys. So have a great day. And I will see you on the next video.
Bye for now.